off this countdown, we have the sarcophagus. Basically, this is a massive steel and concrete structure that covers the Chernobyl power plant. It was designed to help contain the radiation. The construction of the structure lasted for 206 days, and those working on it had to work in shifts of no more than 7 minutes. Any more time spent near the reactors would have killed them. But still, they did sacrifice their lives building this because thousands of workers still died from exposure to the radiation. Those that survived got severely ill, and majority of them developed cancer. Nowadays, the sarcophagus is still there, but it's beginning to crumble. In 2019, they were in the process of dismantling it because it was going to collapse. So a new one is currently being installed. That's probably the scariest thing in Chernobyl because of how deadly the building it's containing is. At number 9 we have missing silver filters. Remember those pile of creepy dolls? Yeah, of course you do, it literally just freaking happened. Well in addition to the piles of dead dolls, there are also piles of old gas masks everywhere, especially in one old school classroom. Some cheeky and hilarious sick person even put some of these masks on dolls. Isn't that great? Anyway, what is mysterious about these gas masks is that these filters inside of all of them have been removed. And these filters contain just a small amount of silver in them. And what is most likely what happened is that looters came and took all of them. But what was done with the silver? No one really knows. If looters did indeed steal them, then I'm guessing that somewhere out there some people have radioactive jewelry or even silverware because they most likely sold it. It's hard to say, but if any of you watching have your own Geiger meters at home right now, I would check it out on anything silver in your home because you might just have a Chernobyl souvenir without even knowing it. At number 8 we have Survivor Immortality. While this one doesn't take place in Chernobyl exactly, it stems from Chernobyl. One Russian scientist who survived the explosion back in 1986 and six other Russian scientists have recently relocated to the small Greek island of Gados. There is some conspiracy though because some believe that these scientists actually relocated to the island to become immortal. Gavdos has 50 residents in total on the island and it is believed to have mythical healing powers that make its residents immortal. Reporters from Vice interviewed a filmmaker who was making a documentary on the island and found out that the scientists work on various inventions from inside the local compound. They also have 7 acres of land that was given to them by a priest. Some think these Russian scientists are spies, while others believe they moved out there to not only become immortal themselves, but also clear them of all the radiation using the mystical powers of the island. They are apparently also building a temple named the Temple of Apollo. I think these guys were a little too close to the blast, if you know what I mean. At number 7 we have the random examination chair. Out in the middle of a wooded area in the exclusion zone is a random gynecologist chair. How the hell did it get there? <laughs> No one freaking knows. It can only be assumed that this chair was picked up by some local pranksters who went through the trouble of picking up this radioactive artifact and brought it to a random spot in the woods. But that is so much freaking work. I mean, guys, why? Aside from that, every other possibility is straight up terrifying. Maybe the blast blasted the chair out in the forest, but if it did, then why was there one of these chairs so close to a freaking radioactive reactor? See, it, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, it's just another unproven, less than appealing site that can be found in the exclusion zone. At number 6 we have silhouettes. You may remember this one from one of my other Chernobyl videos too. The mystery here is we have no idea if these silhouettes are actually based on real people or if it's just a morbid art piece done by another Chernobyl creepy artist. New silhouettes show up all of the time all over the town of Pripyat and the only other mystery here is who is behind it? Is it one talented artist or is it a group that has decided to take turns so no one ever gets the true answer? No matter what, these things sure do add to the creep factor of this ghost town and I'm sure it's also a terrifying sight to see at night. Coming in at our halfway point at number 5, we have a Chernobyl cover up. In a documentary titled The Russian Woodpecker, Fodor Alexandrovich explains a conspiracy theory that the Chernobyl blast was actually orchestrated to cover up the failure of the Russian Woodpecker. Now, it wasn't a Russian bird or the Russian version of Woody the Woodpecker. The Russian Woodpecker was actually an array radar that was meant to detect missiles before they were launched. The device was named after its woodpecker like sound it would make during its operation. It cost 7 billion rubles and unfortunately did not work. Work. It is suspected that it didn't work because of the northern lights messing with its signals, but it can't be for certain. So instead of suffering this terrible embarrassment, the Chernobyl plant that was known for its instability blew up, distracting everyone from the failure of the woodpecker. It's hard to say how likely all of this is, but when shooting the woodpecker documentary, apparently some pretty weird stuff happened to the documentary crew, such as visits from secret police services, as well as even one crew member being shot by a hidden sniper during the Euromaiden protests. Whatever the truth is here, it sounds like they were putting their nose 
nose where it wasn't wanted. At number four, we have no containment building. Back in 1986, when the Chernobyl explosion actually happened, there was quite mysteriously no containment building that surrounded the reactors. Usually, there are containment structures around radioactive places, like the reactors located in Chernobyl. They are gas tight structures that are usually made of steel reinforced concrete, so it can confine fission products that could release into the atmosphere during an accident if one were to happen. Sure enough, we all know that one happened here, and interestingly enough, it was not prepared for an accident that dangerous. According to author Richard Mueller of the book Physics for Future Presidents, the science behind the headlines, if there would have been a containment unit around the reactors, Mueller believes that there would have been virtually no deaths. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if this coincides with any of the conspiracy of the Russian woodpecker as mentioned before. Maybe. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have alien saviors. In this case, they quite literally came in peace. An eyewitness by the name of Mikhail Varitsky claimed to have seen a large fireball of light hovering above the reactor on the night of the explosion. Later on September 16th in 1989, apparently there was another huge radiation leak, and it is reported that this same ball of light was seen in the exact same spot once again. Many believe it to be aliens that were actually protecting us from the radioactive blast. Some claim that the blast was nowhere near as big as what it could have been and that these aliens actually helped absorb and clean up whatever extra radiation that they could to save us. You know me, I'm all about the alien theories but I'm not sure about this one. I will say, many say similar events happened during the Fukushima accident as well. Oh well, aliens if you are listening to me right now and you did help us, thank you. Now show yourself. At number two, we had the Blackbird of Chernobyl. In April of 1986, right before the explosion in July, many reported seeing a large creature that looked like a blackbird flying around Chernobyl. This creature was large with red glowing eyes and was compared to America's legend, the Mothman. Why? What's so similar between a large Mothman and a large blackbird? Well, both of these creatures had large glowing red eyes, as well as both showed up right before major events. The Mothman appeared and was spotted right before the Silver Bridge collapse in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Virginia in 1967, which reportedly killed 46 people. Some survivors of the Chernobyl blast reported seeing this giant scary creature fly away from the reactor after the blast. Many believe that this bird was a paranormal entity that was a harbinger of terrible things to come. Others believe it was just a large stork. I don't know what to believe here, but the idea of a giant paranormal creature that is similar to the one that was seen in the US 20 years before gives me goosebumps in the best way possible. I love monster and ghost lore, which is what brings us to our number number one spot. And finally, coming in at number one, we have my favorite, ghosts. That's right, not just named a ghost town because it's abandoned, but also because there are many different spirits that are said to be found here. Andrei Karsukov, a nuclear physicist from New York, told one story after his visit to the area back in 1997. Karsukov reports that he went to the power station one day at 7.30 a.m. and visited the number four reactor in the sarcophagus. You know, the big containment unit structure that they should have had on there before the explosion? Yeah, that thing. Well, he could not go inside due to the high levels of radiation, but once he was down there, he could hear screams coming from the inside due to a fire. So what did he do? He ran upstairs to the control room to get help, and once he barged open the door, he was told that he was the first person to open that door in three years. He was also told that the only way in was where he was, and if someone came in after him, they would have tripped the alarm. So it was impossible for anyone else to be down there except him. There was also a floodlight that turned on and off at very strange moments, leading the crew to believe someone or something was in the building with them. But what was it? Mm, I don't know. You be the judge. Starting off this countdown, we have the Three Mile Island nuclear accident. This disaster is said to be the most serious nuclear accident in US history. It took place at the Three Mile Island plant in Pennsylvania. At 4 a.m. on March 28, 1979, a number of equipment failures took place. A pressure valve in one of the reactors failed to close, so the cooling water contaminated with radiation was draining into other buildings. And then the control operators didn't know how to deal with this. And soon the reactor heated to over 4,000 degrees, and radioactive steam seeped out of the building. Although no deaths or injuries were reported, it's believed that this leak caused a number of cancers and infant deaths in the area. Of course, the company downplayed the event. They were like, oh, nothing really happened here. No, 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 no radiation leaked out. But that's not the case. In the end, only pregnant women and small children were told to evacuate the area. But those that stayed suffered the consequences. 
Coming in at number nine, we have the gas masks. And if you guys are liking this video or wanna see part three, then smash that like button. Chernobyl already looks like the place where an apocalypse occurred. Buildings are completely abandoned, run down, and overgrown with nature. What doesn't help is the piles upon piles of gas masks scattered all throughout Chernobyl. This really adds to the eeriness of this place. And again, makes it look like a place where a zombie or alien takeover occurred. In fact, there is one one room inside a school which is just completely filled with child size gas masks. It's very creepy, but also sad. Like imagine how frightened the young children were when this happened. The gas masks found there are just a sad reminder of the horrors that took place there when the reactor exploded. Moving on to number eight, we have the rotting toys. Littered all throughout the city are toys or personal belongings people had to leave behind. The saddest thing to see are pictures of children's toys left behind. Like, I just think that was probably someone's favorite little dolly. Go anywhere there and you'll find items scattered everywhere, now broken and covered in filth. Like imagine, you're rushed out of your home and have to leave behind all your personal belongings. That must have been so hard. I can't imagine how everyone must have felt. It's really depressing to think about. Moving on at number seven, we have the examination chair. So uh, this one is pretty strange, but somehow a gynecologist examination chair ended up in the middle of the woods outside of a hospital. Not only is that super weird, but it's also super creepy. It's all rusted and beat up and looks like an old torture device. Not only that, but that means someone had to go inside the abandoned hospital, find that chair, and then carry it all the way back down and into the woods. I got a lot of questions. Why would someone do this? And how long did it take them to do this? And again, why would someone do this? Either way, it makes for a very spooky encounter. Moving on at number six, we have the abandoned cooling tower. A partially constructed cooling tower can be found at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. They were built to evaporate the cooling water from the two new reactors. Sadly, they were never completed. Now, these things are massive. The diameter was over 120 meters, and it stands at 150 meters tall. Obviously, after the accident, there was no need to continue on with the construction of this, so the government just left the towers there along with everything else. Eventually, over time, nature will have its way with it, and it will start to erode and crumble. It's just crazy seeing all these abandoned infrastructures. Imagine how life would have been if that explosion never happened. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the toxic river. There's a river that's just filled with radioactive water right near the reactor. The scariest part is despite how toxic the water is, a bunch of aquatic life live there. In particular, giant catfish. Yes, giant catfish. A video from 2016 shows a massive catfish swimming in the water. People originally were like, oh my god, what the heck is that? It must be some sort of mutated animal. Later, it was just found out to be a giant catfish. But still, what the heck? And it's the fact that they have adapted to be able to survive in that highly toxic water. Like, that just baffles me. Not only that, but they can thrive there because the water has no higher predators. Obviously though, you're not allowed to go fishing there. Okay, I feel like that's a given, but I also feel like people would still try it, so I'm just gonna say it. Don't go fishing there. In our fourth spot, we have the jarfish. Speaking of fish, we're gonna go with this. So back in 2016, photographer and journalist Miriam Wazer took a trip to explore the ruins of Chernobyl. While inside an abandoned building, she came across something very creepy and odd. She found a bunch of fish and other specimen in jars. Why someone was collecting fish, it just baffles many. And they weren't even like proper beakers or science mason jars. No, no, it looked like someone emptied out their jar of pickles and then used it to store the specimen. I think it's best if those remain untouched. Like, can you imagine how stinky they would be if they were open nowadays? They would reek. Old stinky fish is not something I would ever want to handle. Now the other specimen beside the fish are unknown. No one knows what the heck they are. But if you know, let me know in the comments below. 
Coming in at number three, we have the abandoned hospitals. The hospitals at Chernobyl are quite eerie. They're just filled with rusted, empty hospital beds, littered syringes, and more. The walls and floors are cracking, and there's dirt and questionable red marks on the floor. I think the saddest thing, though, is that these hospitals are often trashed with medical supplies just tossed everywhere. The days after the explosion happened, people were frantically rushing to hospitals. Hospital staff were overwhelmed by the amount of people there. This moment is still preserved in the hospitals to this day. It's pretty dark once you think about it. And at number two today, we have the Sad Alley. The Sad Alley, or the Alley of Memory, is an alley in the Ukraine created in memory of the villages and residents who had to flee from their homes during the disaster. Basically, it's a walkway with signs lining the sides. These signs are names of cities and villages that had to evacuate and leave everything behind. It's a way to ensure we just never forget the impact that this disaster had. It's really sad. And in our number one spot today, we have the radioactive spiders. Yes, you heard me correctly. Imagine if Peter Parker got bit by one of these bad guys. He'd be like a weirdly mutated Spider-Man or something like that. But anyways, the spiders in the exclusion zone are radioactive. So you definitely don't want to be bit by one. Oh wait, it gets worse. They also make radioactive webs. Yeah, you heard me, that's a thing. So you don't have to just worry about these spiders, but you have to worry about walking through their deadly webs. Like, what the heck? No thank you, nuh-uh. I'm not a fan of spiders, but imagine radioactive ones. That sounds like it belongs in a horror movie. Starting us off at number 10 are Dewey's old favorite, dolls. Remember this one? Yeah, so in case you missed a few of our other Chernobyl videos, there are large piles of creepy, most likely possessed, burned up, radioactive dolls everywhere. Where are they coming from? Well, odds are most of these are actually coming from tourists and people looking to grab that one spooky and scary pick for the gram, but no one knows how this all came to be. It's hard to know if this started from actual dolls that witnessed the explosion or if someone just had the bright idea one day to start adding messed up dolls all over the exclusion zone. In the end, we will never know because unless you are a regular there at the exclusion zone, it's hard to distinguish which dolls have been there since day one and which ones are new additions. Either way, I hate all of it. Moving on to number nine, we have the Taylor Energy Spill. If you guys are liking this video so far, then smash that like button for me, the Christmas cowgirl. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of this, but chances are you haven't because this oil spill was kept pretty hush hush. Hardly anyone outside of Louisiana knew what went down. That's because they wanted to keep it all a secret in order to protect the company's reputation. Basically, back in 2004, an oil production platform sank in a mudslide after Hurricane Ivan struck. It said that 300 to 700 barrels of oil per day spewed from this site. This has been going on for more than 14 years. The spill was hidden for six of these years before an environmental group stumbled upon it and was like, What's going on here? Why is there oil seeping here? This is close to being one of the worst oil spills in US history. Like millions of barrels have leaked into the Gulf of Mexico, polluting the waters. To be more precise, they estimated that the spill leaked 140 million gallons of oil which is insane. In our eighth spot, we have Sellafield, UK. Back in the day during the Cold War, Sellafield was the site where weapon grade nuclear material was produced for the UK's nuclear weapon program. However, in 1957, one of the wind scale piles caught on fire and 11 tons of uranium was on fire for three days. As a result, radioactive material started spreading across the Lake District. It was deemed Britain's worst nuclear accident. On top of that, no one was evacuated and no one received iodine pills. Why? Well, workers were told to keep it all under wraps and to just keep working like nothing happened. Things continued on until they found out that like golf courses, milk, and chickens, among other things, were getting contaminated. That's when they were forced to tell the public about this. To this day, this place is considered one of the most radioactive places in the world. In our seventh spot, we have the Halifax explosion. This is said to be the deadliest industrial disaster in Canada. It occurred on December 6, 1917, when a cargo ship filled with war explosives collided with another ship in the Halifax Harbor. The collision caused a massive explosion. 2,000 innocent people lost their lives. 9,000 were injured by the explosion and the flying debris and collapsing buildings. Others were killed by fires that scorched the area from the explosion. 
explosion. On top of that, a plume of black, thick smoke filled and polluted the air. Moving on to number six, we have the reactive zone of Paris. During the 1920s to 1930s, a number of radioactive tests were done in this area. The test involved salts of radium 226. They were carried out safely until the French army decided to take over, and they ended up seriously contaminating the area. And they never disposed of the radioactive waste properly. In the 1990s, 61 barrels of cesium 137 and radium 226 were found stored there. On top of that, there was 160,000 gallons of contaminated soil. Over the years, the area has been decontaminated, or at least they tried to. It never really worked. And in 2006, more contaminated areas were found. The whole time, the area was so radioactive, and the French army tried to keep it all a secret. But the people living nearby suffered. A high percentage of people living in the surrounding areas were found to have cancer. Although they denied that this site had anything to do with it, it seems quite obvious that it does. To this day, this place is considered the most radioactive zone on the planet. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the contaminated hospital. Back in September of 1987, two individuals broke into an abandoned hospital in Brazil. They then were going around taking some things, hoping that they could resell it and get some money. Some things that they stole were parts from a teletherapy unit. Little did they know that what they took home was highly radioactive. That night, the two men fell ill and began throwing up. Over the course of the next couple of days, things got worse. In fact, one of the men had his hand swell and he had to get it partially amputated. But they didn't know what was making them sick. Plus, they didn't really want to tell people like, oh hey, we broke into a hospital and stole some stuff, so they kept it all a secret. And then one of the guys actually dismantled this radioactive object and was like, oh, what do we have in here? He ended up spreading cesium over a large area. As a result, four people died and 250 others were injured from exposure to the radioactive materials. A total of 112,000 people were exposed to the radioactive material. On top of that, the men's homes were demolished because they were so contaminated, and a number of other areas had to be decontaminated. To this day, this is said to be one of the world's worst nuclear disasters and one of the world's worst radiological incidents. In our fourth spot, we have the Exxon Valdez oil spill. On March 24th, 1989, one of the worst man-made disasters in US history took place. So on this day, an oil tanker owned by Exxon Shipping Company spilled 11 million gallons of crude oil into Prince William Sound. So just after midnight that day, the ship hit a reef. The collision caused the ship's hull to tear open and all that oil spilled into the water. Turns out that the captain of Exxon Valdez was drinking at the time of this event and also was not qualified to steer such a massive ship. This spill impacted 13,000 miles of coastline. It killed hundreds of thousands of birds, otters, seals, whales, you name it. Even to this day, this area is still heavily polluted. And to think it could have been easily avoided had they had a different captain of the ship. And most like the other disasters on this list, the company tried to keep it all hush hush, but in the end, the truth revealed itself. Coming in at number three, we have the North Korea nuclear accident. North Korea is a very secretive country. It's hard to know what really goes on there. What we do know though, is that North Korea is openly creating nukes and missiles and experimenting with these nuclear weapons. According to a number of articles, one of these tests in 2017 didn't go so well. 200 nuclear workers were killed at Kim Jong-un's testing facility. Basically, they're doing so much nuclear testing that the ground just can't take it anymore. I mean, in 2018, a mountain collapsed after more nuclear testing. But anyways, in this case, an unfinished tunnel collapsed, killing 100 workers. Then 100 more workers died after trying to rescue the first group. Now, this disaster is nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl, but I put this on this list because experts are scared and have predicted that in the future, the nuclear testing facility will most likely crumble. And when it does, a radioactive leak will occur, and it's said to be even worse than Chernobyl. So they're on the path to a very bad nuclear explosion or 
week. In our second spot, we have the Bhopal disaster, also referred to as the Bhopal gas tragedy. This was a gas leak that occurred on the night of December 2nd to the morning of December 3rd in 1984. It occurred at the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant in Bhopal, India. Apparently, the pipes were lacking routine maintenance and that caused a backflow of water into a tank containing methyl isocyanate gas. That's what caused this gas leak. This is said to be one of the world's worst industrial disasters. Over 500,000 people were exposed to this gas. It seeped into the towns surrounding the plant. It said that the death toll was 2,259, but later it was revealed to be much higher with 3,787 deaths. Some even believe it was up to 8,000 deaths but the government is concealing the true number of deaths from this tragedy. On top of that, over 500,000 people were left injured, including nearly 4,000 permanent injuries. And in our number one spot today, we have the Kishchim disaster. On September 29th, 1957, an explosion occurred at a plutonium production site for nuclear weapons and nuclear fuel reprocessing plant in Russia. It was built during the late 1940s as part of a Soviet program to develop nuclear weapons. It was a secret facility that people did not know about. Well, on that day, the cooling system containing radioactive waste failed and no one even noticed. The waste started to heat up and eventually exploded at 350 degrees Celsius. 20 million curries of radioactive material flung into the sky. It got picked up by the wind and spread over an area of 20,000 square kilometers. 270,000 people were living in the affected areas. And what's worse is that the Soviet government refused to let people know what happened. No one evacuated and hundreds of people died from the radioactivity of the area. Hundreds of others suffered from radiation sickness. It wasn't until 1989 that the Soviet government acknowledged what happened. At least in Chernobyl, people were told what went down and then were forced to evacuate.